Hi everyone. I'd like to talk today about how we define motion in the world of physics. Specifically, we'll talk about position, distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. So, our objectives are going to be to understand the difference between position, between distance, and between displacement. Then we'll look at the differences and similarities between speed and velocity. Finally, we'll look at solving problems with average speed and velocity, as we also learn how to calculate distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and end up with a little bit on acceleration. So, position. An object's position is its point in space, and if we're talking about motion in one dimension, which is where we'll start, we can set any point we want to as zero. Let's say that point on the number line right now is zero. If we're five meters east of that line is where an object is sitting, of that, uh, five meters east of that point is where an object is sitting, one, two, three, four, five meters away, there's our object. If it's five meters east of our reference point, we'll call this the positive direction east. Fairly straightforward. Just as easily, however, we could go in and we could say, well, it's five meters east of our reference point, but let's call west the positive direction. If we had called this direction west and positive, then our object would have been one, two, three, four, negative five on that scale on the negative side, which would be our east direction. That's a little bit confusing. Don't worry so much about it now. The bottom line is you can set your reference point in your positive direction whichever way you want, as long as you stay consistent within the boundaries of your problem. When position changes, an object has traveled some distance. The more position changes, the more distance is traveled. Distance is what's known as a scalar quantity. It has a magnitude or size only. Direction doesn't count. It's measured in meters, and it's given the symbol d. So if we take a sample problem, a deer walks 1,300 meters east to a creek for a drink. The deer then walks 500 meters west to a berry patch for dinner before running 300 meters west when startled by a loud raccoon. What distance did the deer travel? Well. Its total distance, d, must be 1,300 meters east, then it walked 500 meters west, and then it ran 300 meters west for a total of 2,100 meters, or 2.1 kilometers. Displacement, on the other hand, is a vector quantity. It tells you the straight line distance from where you start to where you finish, regardless of the path you've chosen. It's also measured in meters, and what's tricky is it's given the same symbol, d. So you've got to really know what you're talking about when you go into distance and displacement. They have the same symbol, so you have to be very careful and read the problems with care. A very similar problem, our deer walks 1,300 meters east to a crick, 1,300 meters then it walks 500 meters west, then it ran 300 meters west. What was the deer's total displacement? Well, remember, that's the straight line distance from where you start to where you stop, regardless of how you get there. So the deer started here, and when it was done, after all of that running, it ends up, well, it went 1,300 meters east, 800 west, it went a total displacement of only 500 meters east, because the only points we worry about are the starting point and the ending point. Everything else in between doesn't matter for displacement. Now, because displacement is a vector, it has to have a direction, so 500 meters east. Average speed is the rate at which distance changes. It's a scalar and it's given the symbol v with the line over it. v stands for speed or velocity, the line means average. Now when you use this formula, d over t, because you're talking about average speed, which is a scalar, you have to use a scalar in your formula. That d must therefore stand for distance, so average speed is distance divided by time. The units of this are meters per second, and to help you remember that, speed is a scalar. They both start with s. If we go back to our deer problem, 
Let's assume that we have the exact same action the deer took, but it all occurred in 600 seconds. What is the deer's average speed? Well, average speed is distance divided by time. We said our distance traveled was 2100 meters, and our time was 600 seconds. So, 3.5 meters per second was our deer's average speed. Just like we had a vector version of distance, which was displacement, we have a vector version of speed, which is velocity. Average velocity is the rate at which displacement changes, and it's a vector. But it has the same formula again, so V stands for speed or velocity. The line over it means average, and we've got to know what we're talking about. If we're asking for average velocity now, D over T, in this case, the D must be displacement. If we're looking for velocity, we need a vector in the formula. Average velocity has the same units, meters per second. To help you remember that, velocity is a vector. They both start with V. Let's look at a sample problem again, going back to our deer. Same deer, same actions, but now we want to know the deer's average velocity. Well, we can use the same formula. Average velocity is D over T, but now that D is displacement. We said the displacement of our deer was 500 meters east, and all this took a time of 600 seconds, so the deer's average velocity was only 0.833 meters per second, compared to the average speed, which was 3.5 meters per second. And because average velocity is a vector, we need a direction here as well, east. See the difference between the two? It's subtle, so you've got to be re really, really careful as you read these problems. Let's see if we can't put it all together as we explore the actions of Chuck the Hungry Squirrel. Chuck travels 4 meters east, and then 3 meters north in search of an acorn. The entire trip takes him 20 seconds. Find his distance traveled. Well, distance traveled should be pretty straightforward. D equals 4 meters plus 3 meters, or 7 meters. But to find his displacement, we've got to work a little bit harder this time. We go from the starting point to the ending point. That's a right triangle. To figure out the hypotenuse, the length of the displacement vector, we can use the Pythagorean theorem or recognize that we have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So Chuck's displacement is five meters in the direction, because it's a vector, northeast. Find Chuck's average speed. Well, average speed is distance over time, or seven meters over 20 seconds is 0.35 meters per second for his average speed. And finally, find Chuck's average velocity. Same formula again. V bar equals D over T, but now that D stands for displacement, which was 5 meters northeast in a time of 20 seconds, or 0.25 meters per second northeast. It needs a direction because it's a vector. So some subtleties there, very similar questions. Let's finish up by taking a look at acceleration. Just like velocity was the rate of change of displacement, the rate of change of velocity we call acceleration. It's how quickly velocity changes. And it's given the formula A equals delta V over T. Acceleration is a vector, and its units are meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. That sounds a little funny, meters per second squared. What they're really talking about, if your acceleration is five meters per second squared, that means that your velocity is changing five meters per second, every second, hence 5 meters per second per second, or 5 meters per second squared. If we look at a problem, Monty the monkey accelerates from rest to a velocity of 9 meters per second in a time of 3 seconds. Calculate Monty's acceleration. Well, we'll start with our formula. Acceleration is change in velocity, delta V, divided by T. And if you recall, change in anything is always its final value minus its initial value. So that's going to be V final minus V initial divided by the time. 
His final velocity was 9 meters per second. He accelerates from rest. That means he started at 0 meters per second in a time of 3 seconds. 9 minus 0 is 9, divided by 3 is 3. So 3 meters per second squared. And acceleration is a vector. We don't have a direction here, but we can assume, based on what the problem is telling us and showing us, that the direction must be forward in this case. So in some ways, the direction is implied here. So next steps. I'd like you to take a few minutes and see if you can explain in your own words the difference between position and distance, between distance and displacement, between speed and velocity, and finally between velocity and acceleration. And if you want some more information or have questions, check out aplusphysics.com. Thank you.